I think it's it's a fair assumption to say that uh, open textbooks will be the reality for the 100 highest enrolled courses on the planet. We all teach roughly the same thing in our general education curriculum. There will be five, ten versions of every one of those textbooks. The question is, uh, how fast will we get there? Will that take 10 years or will that take 10 months? And depending on uh, how we structure ourselves, uh, how we set goals, how we set strategy, um, that will determine how successful and how fast we can how, how fast we can move on textbooks, on uh, new forms of open practices and open pedagogies, on new open business models. The main case for OER is around approved effectiveness of teaching and learning, students learning more. Um, a secondary case is increased flexibility for faculty. Um, and maybe the final case is in costs, uh, decreasing costs. So um, as a student, when, when you don't have access to the instructional materials that you need, when you don't have the book or you can't afford to purchase a subscription to the website or something like that, then you can't read the homework, you can't work the problems, um, and it's very hard to be prepared if you can't read before class, and if you can't even do the homework, then it's impossible to pass your class. Uh, as a faculty member, you might have four or five or ten textbooks to choose from as you're getting ready to teach a class, but that's all the choice you have. You can only choose this book or that one. Uh, once you choose a book, because it's completely copyrighted, you have no control over the order that things are in there, or maybe there are examples that were written for this region, but you teach in this region, and you wish you could take some things out, and maybe, maybe take out photographs of the mountains and put in photographs of forests, and take out examples about this and put in other kinds of examples. You just don't have that possibility at all. But to faculty, it's the bigger choice in your classroom. It's, it's being able to do what empowers you as a teacher and empowers your students as learners. So it's, um, it's in that place where OER is that tool that we've all been dreaming of our entire careers that lets us do exactly what we want in our classroom with our students and, and not have them come back to us and say, why am I lugging this book around? <laughs> I'm not using it. Um, so that's really a powerful argument. Um, I think for administrators that argument's a little bit different, but it's pretty much, I mean, happier students means more completion, means a better society we get to live in. And that's, you know, <laughs> in, in, in the perfect world, that's what education does, right? It brings us a happier, more solid citizenship that is willing to contribute back to the organizations that support them. You'll hear a lot of the mantra being about saving students money, and certainly I think open education resources have a cost value proposition, which, which is very much the case, um, but, but I would say that, that that value proposition doesn't work everywhere in the world. I, I was just in the Middle East, for example, and so uh, saving students money just really isn't an issue. It's that, that value proposition doesn't resonate there. And, so, and I think that to some extent we do the open education space a disservice by focusing just on that value proposition because I think that ultimately the real value proposition is going to end up being what is it pedagogically that we can do now with an open resource that we couldn't do before when we just had closed resources. And we're just starting to see some exciting things emerge around that, particularly with students themselves being engaged in creating education content that will be used in the course by other students rather than just being recipients of education content that's been authored by faculty or published.